Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video, we're going to be terraforming our sun. Yeah. How? Well, you'll find out in a second. But no, it's not going to be science fiction, it's actually going to be something that will very likely happen in the future. Welcome to What The Math. All right, all right, all right. So how exactly are we going to terraform something that has a nuclear reactor on the inside, is producing tremendous amounts of energy and is practically the heaviest and also the most energetic object in our solar system? Well, we're going to cheat a little bit. We're not going to cheat by decreasing mass or anything like that. We're going to cheat by waiting a very, very long period of time. As a matter of fact, we're going to start by waiting approximately 5 billion years. The year is now 5 billion AD. The sun? The sun has now become a tiny remnant of itself. It is now what's known as a white dwarf. Its radius is just a little bit bigger than the radius of Earth. Its mass is approximately uh, 0.54 masses of the sun. And if it's not, we're going to correct it to that. Yeah, it's about, it's about correct. And so this is now the White Dwarf Sun. The White Dwarf Sun is basically uh, going to be what our sun will be like for pretty much most of its life in the future. And it's going to stay in this form for billions, if not trillions of years. We've actually discovered quite a lot of White Dwarfs already. The most famous one being Sirius B, which actually is right here. It's a lot more uh, massive than our sun. It's actually um, dramatically more massive. It's about twice the size of this uh, sun white dwarf. Uh, but it seems a lot smaller and that's probably because it's a lot more dense. Um, we've also discovered quite a lot of other ones uh, as small as about 0.17 uh, masses of the sun, which would be this small, or as large as 1.33 masses of the sun, which would be, would be even smaller. And as you can see, they actually decrease in size with mass. If you add a little bit more mass, they'll actually go supernova because they'll reach something known as Chandrasekhar limit. And this limit is supposed to happen right about now. It's not working for some reason. So we might just have to do it manually by essentially exploding the sun. So yeah, if it reaches approximately uh, 1.4-ish masses of the sun as a white dwarf, it will go supernova, and this is known as a type 1a supernova. Anyway, let's go back to the original system and take a look at the white dwarf, the sun, once again. So, um, what we know about white dwarfs is that basically they have no nuclear reaction on the inside. They're just sort of very, very hot bodies that will cool down over time. They start really, really hot, as a matter of fact, uh, and they're extremely dense. And because they're so dense, the um, molecules and the electrons on the inside are highly compacted. So they retain quite a lot of heat and they're extremely dense as well. They're basically like the third densest objects in the universe after neutron stars and uh, black holes. Or at least the black hole singularity and not the black holes themselves. And uh, here the, the initial surface temperature would be close to about 150,000 degrees and it would cool down pretty quickly to about 60,000 and would then start cooling down um, quite uh, a lot slower and it would actually only lose maybe about 500 degrees per um, 1 billion years. So every single billion year it will only lose, oh, okay it doesn't seem to work here, it will only lose about 500 degrees making it now um, 59,000 degrees Kelvin. So it, it will basically cool down very very slowly. And uh, even though it will not be as luminous as the sun used to be, it will still be pretty bright and it will even have a bit of um, habitable zone around it, about which I've talked about in a previous video. But eventually, it's obviously going to lose all of its energy and become a very solid crystal black dwarf. And this is essentially what we're going to be creating right now. Because at some point, as it cools down, as it becomes less and less blue as it changes its colors as it you know 
undergoes its cooling after billions and even trillions of years. Uh oh, I think I just destroyed it by accident. This is not what I wanted. Come back to the original size. Okay, it seems to be changing in size for some reason, but I locked its mass so that they wouldn't change the mass. Uh, so yeah, at some point, it's going to basically start looking more like a tiny sun used to look. It's going to become a little bit more yellow. And uh, it's going to reach a temperature that's, you know, relatively similar to the temperature on the surface of the sun, which is about 5000 degrees Kelvin. Now, the coldest white dwarf we've discovered so far is approximately 3900 degrees Kelvin. It's about this cold. This is a black dwarf known as WD0346246. It's located in our galaxy and um, it's the coldest we've discovered. We also discovered some white dwarfs that are about 90% crystallized already. They're not plasma anymore, they're not degenerative matter. They're actually crystal. And this is what will happen to all of the um, white dwarfs. They'll cool down and turn into large crystal objects. They will essentially be tremendously large crystals. And depending on what they're made of, they might even become basically very dense diamonds. Now we're going to be cooling this down even more. And um, what you need to know about these objects is that they also have their own atmosphere. Uh, they're dense, they're really, really dense, but the atmosphere here can be uh, quite varied, quite uh, dramatically different from what we expect from a star atmosphere or from what um, from a planet atmosphere. So here, atmosphere can actually be very likely hydrogen, but it can also be made out of carbon, it can be made out of helium, or maybe even oxygen. If a star contains a lot of oxygen around it, it might actually have a thick oxygen-based um, atmosphere. So here is the black dwarf now. It's no longer emitting any light, but it's still very hot. The surface here is pretty hot. We're going to lower the surface temperature to something more comfortable. We're going to make it basically uh, an average temperature on Earth, which is about 15 degrees Celsius. And this will happen very likely trillions and trillions of years in the future. Now, obviously, we're not going to be waiting for this to happen. We're not going to possibly even survive that long. But it will definitely happen. And at this point, this is actually an object that you could technically call terraformable. Okay. Well, not really. You could definitely have liquid water here. It's very possible that it will have atmosphere and it will even maybe have some sort of liquids on the surface, but because the gravity here is so extremely high, no person would be able to survive here. And there's nothing you can do about it unless we invent some sort of anti-gravity device. The actual surface gravity here is 7,400 times higher than gravity on Earth. Escape velocity is 2200 kilometers per second. Basically, this is not a very fun place to walk on. But it's a huge crystal. It's warm. It may have some sort of strange liquids on it. And it may have other conditions that are similar to our planet Earth. Except, of course, for the gravity. Gravity, we, we just can't really do anything about. So, this essentially can now be renamed into Terraformed Sun. Everything here would be perfect. And actually, let's maybe just add a little bit of water just to see what happens. I don't think anything changes here. Yeah, water doesn't affect anything. Uh, but yeah, so this is essentially a sun that is a large terraformed crystal that you could hypothetically maybe survive on for a few seconds, but then the gravity would kill you. The gravity would basically squeeze you into a tiny pancake and you would probably break all of your bones in like a second. Nevertheless, this is, I guess, terraformed sun. It's a sun that you could survive on if you're like a robot or something. But other than that, that's all I wanted to do in this video. I know you may feel a little bit cheated that this is not truly a terraformable object that we can survive on. This is also like trillions of years in the future. But hey, you know, it, def it sort of fits the definition of terraformed object. And gravity, well, you know, gravity is just not something that is often mentioned when you talk about terraforming. Anyway, hopefully you learned them from this video, and hopefully now you know how we can potentially in the future terraform stars as well. 
they'll basically terraform themselves, is what I'm trying to say. We don't have to do anything. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Subscribe if you still haven't and share this video with someone who enjoys watching space stuff and wants to learn their video games. Before we finish this video, let's uh, maybe just maybe create a black dwarf supernova and see what happens. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye. Hey, it looks just like a normal supernova. Well, now I feel kind of cheated too. But so beautiful though. This is so beautiful.